Colombia's parliament resumes its audit today, ending a week-long standoff between the ruling and opposition parties over the neutrality of the assembly speaker. The country's railway and subway workers enter the second week of their strike after the long holiday weekend, prompting concerns of major disruptions. And the United States suspends talks with Russia over ending the violence in Syria, saying Moscow is not committed to a ceasefire agreement. These and more coming right up. Hello, it's Tuesday, October 4th here in Seoul. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Hwang Ji-hye. Our top story this morning, Korea's parliament that has been in gridlock for the past week will finally get running again today. While the leadership of the main and opposition parties have agreed to extend the audit period to, to make up for the standoff that caused frustration among the public, they're still split over the neutrality of the National Assembly Speaker. Lee ji reports. The ruling Senate Party's floor leader Jung jin Seok, the Minju Party of Korea's chairwoman Chu mi and the interim leader of the minor opposition People's Party Park ji won all marked National Foundation Day in Gwangwamun. The leaders were gathered there to celebrate Korea's birth more than 4,300 years ago, meeting for the second time since the ruling party refused to participate in parliamentary business, including a regular audit last week. The boycott was sparked by the opposition party's vote on a motion to dismiss the agriculture minister, Kim jae -su. After the ruling party announced an end to its boycott on Sunday, deputy-level officials from the three parties had a separate meeting on Monday, where they decided to extend the audit by four days. The audit will resume on Tuesday and will now continue through October 19. At the meeting, the Senuri Party also reportedly asked the Minju Party to amend the National Assembly law to require the Speaker remain neutral in all parliamentary business. But the opposition rejected the request. The ruling party says Assembly Speaker Jung se gyun abandoned his neutrality by allowing the opposition-backed motion to remove the Agriculture Minister to proceed. Jung, meanwhile, paid a visit to Senuri Party Chair Lee jung yeon who was in the hospital after a week-long hunger strike demanding Jung's resignation. After the meeting, Jung left for Australia to attend a parliamentary leaders' conference organized by MICTA, an association of Mexico, Indonesia, Korea, Turkey and Australia. Lee ji -won, Arirang News. With an ongoing strike by the rail and subway labor unions, subway train services in Seoul and its surrounding areas are expected to dip slightly below usual levels from today. The country's rail operator, CoRail, says operations on subway lines 1, 3 and 4 will drop to up to 80 percent of normal levels during afternoon hours. Subway trains on those lines will run at 92 percent of usual levels during the evening rush hours. A co-rail spokesman said the drop in services is due to a lack of substitute workers. Regular passenger trains will run at 60 percent, freight trains just 42 percent. However, Korea's KTX bullet train will operate as normal without any disruptions. There were high hopes the anti-corruption law that came into effect last Wednesday would make a more transparent society in Korea, but economists are concerned the law will dampen the country's already feeble consumption. So what kind of effect has the law had so far, especially over the long three-day weekend? Devin Whitening reports. The Kim Young-nan law sets the limit for cash gifts at 100,000 won or about 90 U.S. dollars. For other kinds of presents, it's about $45, and for meals, it's about $27. The law has reportedly caused a big drop in spending on corporate credit cards since it took effect last Wednesday. According to credit card processor BC Card, corporate card spending at restaurants last Thursday and Friday fell 8.9 percent from the same dates a month earlier. As for bars and other drinking venues, all card spending plunged 9.2 percent. BC Card said it appears to be an effect of the new rules. 
For the affected workers, the Kim Young Nan law also applies to the floral wreaths traditionally brought by Koreans to family events and other occasions. That's got the farmers who grow those wreaths in a bind. Park Han Hung, who runs a greenhouse in Umsung County, Chungcheong Bukdo Province, told reporters his flowers used to sell at auction for 5,000 won a bunch, about four and a half dollars. Now they fetch less than three dollars and twenty cents. The other nurseries in Park's area have closed up shop. But with all the cautions surrounding gift giving, how are violators to be caught? On Saturday and Sunday, the first weekend since the law took effect, a group of activists calling themselves Lan Parazzi, a play on the law's name, headed to the nation's restaurants, bars, golf courses, and more to try to find illicit gift givers. The head of the Nan Parazzi, Moon Sung Ok, said using hidden cameras and through the cooperation of staff, they found a few violations. But they won't report all of them. It can take a while to verify the facts. But for those who do report violations of the law, it can be rewarding. Depending on the amount of money that winds up back in state coffers, the whistleblower can receive up to 3 billion won, or about 2.7 million dollars. Devin Whiting, Arirang News. The Korean government is planning to adopt a so-called cashback system that would allow customers to withdraw cash at convenience stores as they make their purchases. For more on the changes, Kim Min-ji reports. Consumers in Korea will soon be able to withdraw cash from their carts while making purchases at convenience stores instead of having to find an ATM. The Financial Supervisory Service says it will implement a cashback service starting in the first quarter of next year. Users will be able to add a cash advance amount to their bill when making an in-store purchase with a card and get the cash back at the register. The system is similar to those in place in the U.S. and Australia. It will only apply to debit cards at first but will later be expanded to include credit cards as well. The cash back amount will be limited to 100,000 won or roughly 90 U.S. dollars per account per day. The commission will be set at a lower rate than for public ATMs. The government will test the service in 12 runs at convenience stores, starting with 20 run by the retail giant Shinsege. GS25, another convenience store chain, will adopt the pilot service in November. However, there are already concerns that it could lead to a rise in robberies due to the increase in cash holdings by convenience stores. The FSS says it will step up installations of CCTV cameras and keypad covers to prevent passcode leaks and says the cash advance limit was set in part to prevent a rise in crime. Kim min Arirang News. In a worrying deterioration of relations, the United States has suspended talks with Russia on its efforts to end the violence in Syria. U.S. State Department spokesman John Kirby said Washington is halting its participation in bilateral channels with Russia as Moscow did not live up to its commitments under the ceasefire agreement. He said the U.S. will also withdraw personnel dispatched to take part in the creation of a joint implementation center. The center was intended to facilitate collaboration between the U.S. and Russian militaries in targeting the Islamic State group and the al-Nusra Front, an al-Qaeda-linked jihadist group in Syria. The statement came a matter of hours after Russian President Vladimir Putin suspended an agreement with the U.S. on disposing of weapons-grade plutonium, citing Washington's, quote, unfriendly actions towards Moscow. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says he's not in any way considering sending a letter of apology to the victims of Japan's wartime sex slavery. Japan's Kyoto News Agency reported Abe made the remarks on Monday when asked whether he would do so to resolve the issue. He reportedly said Seoul and Tokyo must fully implement the landmark deal struck last December and made clear an apology letter was not included in the agreement. Last month, civic groups in both Japan and Korea demanded Abe send a letter of apology to the victims. Japanese scientist Yoshinori Osumi has won this year's Nobel Prize in Medicine for his work on self-eating cells. He figured out how cells degrade and essentially take out the trash. Barry Welsh reports. The Japanese cell biologist received the award for his research on how cells operate to detoxify themselves. Yoshinoru Osumi's work on cell breakdown, a field known as autophagy, is important because it can help explain what goes wrong in a variety of diseases.
Autophagy, derived from the Greek words that basically mean self-eating, is how the body recycles unwanted or unneeded cells. These unneeded cells are located in the body and their useful elements are recycled to generate energy or create new cells. It's a very important process that prevents cancerous growths from forming, maintains a healthy metabolism and can also protect against diabetes. Osumi's research concerns how cells break down and recycle their content. And disruptions in this recycling process have been linked to diseases like cancer, Parkinson's and type 2 diabetes. The discoveries made by Osinori Osumi have been instrumental in revealing the mechanism and significance of a fundamental physiological process. And there is growing hope that this knowledge will lead to the development of new strategies for the treatment of many human diseases. Osumi was awarded a prize of 8 million Swedish crowns, or roughly 933,000 US dollars. And he told Japanese media that he was extremely honored. In recent years, I've unexpectedly received many awards, but the weight of the Nobel Prize is on another level. The Japanese cell biologist was born in 1945 in Fukuoka, Japan, and has been a professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology since 2009. The prize for physiology or medicine is the first of the Nobel Prizes awarded each year. Prizes for achievements in science, literature and peace were first awarded in 1901 in accordance with the will of dynamite inventor and businessman Alfred Nobel. Barry Welsh, Arirang News. Teju, Korea's largest resort island, is the only place in Korea listed as a World Natural Heritage Site by UNESCO. And our Kim Hae Song was there to check out its beauty in the perfect autumn weather. Korea's southern island of Jeju is well known for its emerald-colored beaches. An island created after undersea volcanic eruptions two million years ago, Jeju boasts a unique landscape of volcanic cones and tuff rings. Also known as the Island of the Gods, Jeju Island, visited by over 10 million tourists a year, is the only place in the world to have won triple crowns from UNESCO in the area of natural science. A biosphere reserve in 2002, World Natural Heritage in 2007, and a global geopark in 2010. I went to explore the 7-kilometer-long Manjangur Lava Tube, a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site recognized for its outstanding geological value. These lava tubes were formed by the basalt lava from the Komun Orem volcano 200 to 300,000 years ago, when lava flowed down to the coast some 13 kilometers away. And Hallasan Mountain, the tallest mountain in Korea. As I climb, I felt like I'm in the movie Avatar, surrounded by wild, tall plant species. Mount Hallasan is rich in biodiversity, home to 4,000 animal and 1,800 plant species thanks to its high altitude and its sharply varying temperatures from the bottom to the mountain peak. Mount Hallasan is 1950 meters high and it takes about five hours to reach its peak. I found a group of tourists at the peak taking pictures to capture the moment. Between 1,000 to 5,000 tourists a day come here to see the spectacular view. So I heard that the Hala Mountain was one of the heritage of Jeju Island, so um, very good option to come here. So very beautiful, beautiful actually. At the summit is Pengloktam, an elliptical volcano with a diameter of 700 meters. Here we have the lake crater Pengloktam. Sometimes it's filled with water and sometimes not, but thanks to recent rain, we got to see the great view. Clouds shroud the lake against a backdrop of green mountain slopes and a flock of crows flying high, combining for a truly breathtaking view. On my last day, I went to see the sunrise from Songsan Ilchulbong, a volcanic tuff cone famous for its sunrise view. The clouds gave way to daybreak, and the mesmerizing sun roused the sleeping island. The sides of Songsan Ilchulbong have been eroded by waves, making the rocks nearly perpendicular to the surface. 
a destination of different colors, Jeju is not only the treasure of Korea, but also a heritage of the world. Kim hye Arirang News, Jeju. And that wraps it up for now. I'm Hong Jie. Do join us again at 8 a.m. Korea time for more updates. And goodbye for now.